What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and a new video, first one in series of frameworks and models. Um, this video is going to be a quick video in and out of how are you going to play about intensive flow. Uh, without further ado, I would like to start with what example today we're going to present about. We're going to start with MNIST data set. Uh, as Hello World is to programming, MNIST data set is to machine learning. So we're going to start a basic machine learning example of, on MNIST and try building a model around it. So MNIST is a basic, very simple computer vision data set. It consists of images, uh, 110 images of uh, digits, and it also has got labels for the same. So for example, uh, as you can see, um, we got 110 images, and we also got the labels for the same. It's 50401. So in this tutorial, which we are going to follow today, which you could also refer to on the TensorFlow's own website, um, we're going to train a model to look at these images and predict what digit they are actually. So how does a model actually looks like? A model actually looks like this. So uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of details of how, how this model works because I'm going to cover those in a separate series of videos which are only focused on models. But for now, to explain this, we're going to follow softmax regression. What does softmax give us is basically a probability between 0 to 1. And all of, so for multi, for multi classification problems, we have a very common and simple technique. It's called a softmax regression and we basically say that since the sum of all probabilities is going to be one so we can find out uh, which class uh, a test example belongs to. The vectorized notation for the same could be represented by what we see on the screen. So y is a one hot vector. One hot vector here it means is uh, suppose there are 10 classes so there would be 10 rows and it will be single column vector with all rows being zero and um, one for the value which is true for and then we have got weight matrices and then we got our inputs and then we got our biases so uh, what you see basically is a, is a very simple model which could be represented as y is equal to softmax weights then our input and b our biases so things that we're gonna learn are basically the weights and the biases. Uh, taking one step back, since we directly jumped into model and calculations, I want to talk about TensorFlow first. So TensorFlow is basically a framework which, which provides a lot of benefits to us and does a lot of calculations automatically for us. Uh, what it basically does is it expresses a numeric computation as a graph. Now. The nodes of these graphs are basically operations, mathematical operations, which could have any number of inputs and could have any number of outputs. And the edges of these graphs are the tensors, which flows between the nodes. Now, since the entire graph is the computations, it can automatically calculate the backdrop to efficiently determine how your variables affect the loss. This is uh, actually a very big uh, bonus to us. Uh, these automatic calculations of backprop takes a lot of overhead in terms of coding from us. Uh, there are a few basic terminologies about TensorFlow which you know, need to know before you go in and play. Uh, I'm going to go into those. The basic terminologies that you need to know about are variables and placeholders. So variables are stateful nodes which output their current value and uh, placeholders are the values which are fed at execution time. As you can see, this is an operation rep represented in form of a graph and each node is basically a mathematical operation that we are doing. So this is what TensorFlow does as I talked about in later. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump onto an example, pull in the data set and try to uh, go step by step how we would we implement a model. The MNIST database, basically you could download it from the Yanlikon website 
um, it has got a 70,000 examples, 60,000 in training, and 10,000 examples in test set. Uh, it's all well labeled, and you could also see various models that have been tried against it and what have been the error rate across them. Um, or you could choose to you follow the TensorFlow's own example, which I would be linking down below and which I have followed mostly for my implementation. Uh, so to go through the data, basically, uh, let us just import the data set and I'm trying to try and see how much is my training and test set sizes looks like. So just going through that, uh, I get all the database and I see that I've got 55,000 and 10,000 in my test set. Uh, where did the rest of the 5,000 go? Basically, uh, TensorFlow divides them into three categories. Uh, one is the training set, other is the test set, and one is the cross-validation set. For this example purposes, we would not be using the cross-validation set. Uh, going down further, I'm just gonna go and show you how our data set basically looks like. Uh, it's gonna so I display both the training set and the test set as you can see this, this looks like seven this looks like three this looks like four and similarly the test sets now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the model which we discussed earlier and we're gonna just go implement and you're gonna see how easy it is to implement those so we're gonna create our placeholders and variables first X is our input if you remember uh, and we have it as a float 32 type and 784. How does this 784 come? Basically it's a 28 into a 28 size image and we flatten it, it by multiplying 28 into 28 so you get the size. Our weight is basically a TF variable and you can see we initialize it with zeros. Uh, 784 into 10. 10 is our output vector size because it's a one hot vector remember and so we have got vector of 10 and uh, similarly biases are uh, vectors of 10 size 2. Um, so what we go and we uh, basically implement a model which is pretty simple tf.matmol and we multiply the both and we add the biases to it. Now we know our prediction is going to be you know we're gonna store our prediction create a placeholder to store our predictions and now we're gonna cal calculate our loss which is we do we find out over here across entropy loss which is basically a mean over soft max of uh, all those stuff uh, then we do a gradient descent and we calculate gradient descent on our uh, cross entropy loss but with learning rate 0 0.5 now uh, till now we haven't calculated anything at all if you haven't seen we have just created placeholders and variables and defined a loss and defined how we're gonna optimize our loss. Um, now, what, now we go into the major chunk and portion of it. We create a TensorFlow session and then we start going through. So we run a version of gradient descent which is called batch gradient descent. We take small batches of data and try to run, optimize over it. Um, so this all is done in this piece of code which you see on the screen right now. Um, after that, we go and check our prediction accuracies. We check how many of those we got right and how many of those got wrong. So let us see how what's the accuracy right now of our data set. Okay, so we got around 91.9% accuracy on running through this algorithm, which is pretty awesome uh, being it our first attempt. Uh, let's go and uh, see uh, further um, what all data set we can take it out. So I just want to see how does the mis what are the misclassified images and how do they look. So after running through an algorithm, uh, you could see these screens and each screen you could see that this image is classified as three, but should be classified as nine we can make it out but the machine wasn't able to learn to that level of accuracy and hence this is where our algorithm right now failed and this is what we will try to improve in next sessions to actually get to a better version of MNIST training. Um, again uh, the purpose of our model was to learn weights and the biases and now I'm gonna show you how does after learning weight uh, our model basically looks like. So. 
if we go through the code, uh, if I try to represent the weights that we have learned over, after so many iterations, we would see these. And what these are basically, if you could, if you could see these, uh, you would find out that these are basically like image filters. So if you are to lay a zero over this image, and you will be able to make out it's a zero just by laying over this. So this is learned over iteration and if you want you can plot it after every 20 or 40 or 50 iterations and see how these uh, weights evolve over time. Um, and similarly you can see how how these weights like between two and three there is so much discrepancy and that's why our models sometimes fail to recognize the right image like classic like for example this is classified as two where it should have been classified as three it's probably because the weights that we learned are so close that it wasn't able to do that so there are other models which basically gives high accuracy and those are going to be our discussion topics as we proceed through our journey on uh, different models that we could implement uh, my next set of videos as i discussed earlier are also going to be on models uh, so that I could discuss implementation of few papers that I'm passionate about um, that I have in my mind stored that I would do videos about. Uh, hopefully I would be able to upload my next video uh, this week by this weekend and continue on regular cadence uh, starting next week. Thanks again for your support. Please like and subscribe uh, if you find this helpful. I also provide any form of feedback or any topics in machine learning or AI that you would like me to uh, talk about. Um, till then, um, best of luck and have a good day. Thank you.